Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here again for Let's Make a Movie, Episode 2, probably a show that I shouldn't have started. You know, I kind of start these projects and things and then I really don't, I really don't think it through. Like, I, you know, I have so much stuff to review today, like it's not even funny. Like, I'm, I might just change the day that I do this show, because Fridays are just, like, busy as hell. Like, they can be empty sometimes when no interesting movie comes out, but for the most part, Fridays are so busy. I have, I have MasterChef Junior, I have X, I have Deep Water, I have this, I have another movie, I have another movie. That's, like, six things to review all in one day. And so, yeah, but today I just wanted to talk about the script. Now, obviously, once you have a movie idea, you have to write a script and script writing is something that it's really hard because everyone has their own style of storytelling. And so it's hard to say, like, if there's a legitimate way of writing a script the only thing that I would say is to just look up a script of a movie that you like and then uh, copy that format because you need to write in that format in order to have your script accepted by the industry, <laughs> which is kind of gay because it's like, you know, a script is a script is a script. Like, I should be able to write it however the fuck I want to write it. And so I, I copied the format and I wrote my first script in 2017 and I wrote it in like a week and it was a really good script you know everyone really loved it there there wasn't really anyone who did who had like any criticism there might have been a couple here and there but in terms of writing the script a couple of tips are as follows R.L. Stein really helped me, and I said this last video. R.L. Stein said, you know, don't worry about writing a full story at first. Just write scenes that you picture, and then you can piece them together like a puzzle. And that is very, very good advice, because a lot of the times with these stories, if you don't know the full story in your head, the script, you know, it could be a disaster. Uh, you know, you could just write for 400 pages. That's what Stephen King does. Stephen King comes up with an idea, he writes a book, and he doesn't know the ending. And that's another thing, is to write your ending first. Because your ending, if you write that first, you know how to get to it. You know that you can take all these cool little side roads to getting to the end because you know the final destination. And I think that that is very important. You know, your ending could change too. Like, it's not like your ending has to be completely concrete, but it's a good idea to have the ending there. You know, Safi says that that's not good, but it, it is good. It is a good way of writing. That's how I've written all of my stories, all of my scripts. I have known the ending before writing the script. Like with the first one, uh, I sort of had like a trilogy because I would get these like little pictures of like, oh, it would be cool to see in the sequel to see that and then in the third one to see that. And that's another thing is that you have to be open to the ideas coming in. Like, what happens with me frequently is I get these idea explosions where it'll just be one day casually doing something, and then I just get this explosion, this, this snowstorm of ideas that just, like, you know, all these ideas popping up into my head. I got to write them all down, and then after that, I'll, I won't get any ideas. And that's what you really need to do. You really need to be open for that to happen. And then you need to piece the story together from there. I won't give anything away about I've Been Bitten. But when I wrote that story in 2019, 
I got the idea, of course. You know, you always need the idea first. And then after that, I got my first picture of the movie. I pictured two people having dinner together. And it's a very awkward, creepy dinner. Like, it's a very, like, uh, how would you say it? Like a an intense, suspenseful type of dinner. It's really weird. It, it doesn't really fit. You know, they don't really fit. It's a very uh, interesting scene uh, to see. Because I pictured, like, you know, what would it have been like? That's another thing, too, is that it's good to take from real life and to think about, like, you know, to model characters after people you really know and to try to, like, write interesting characters off of them. You know, don't have it be, like, exactly like them because, obviously, it's a movie. You know, these stories would never happen in real life. But just try to, like, you know, like, for instance, every single story, every single movie, there's this girl that I used to know named Jessie, and I'm not going to say her last name, but I I always picture her. Every single movie, I always write a character based off of her. And it really helps me because I really liked her a lot, and, uh, you know, just she was like the perfect girl to me. And so every movie, I try to think of her when I write the female character, and I try to, like, have a, a piece of her in the character and I would advise doing that because it can make these stories a lot more personal. It can make them a lot more interesting to just see, like, you know, what would it have been like for this dinner scene to have happened? It's such an interesting thing. It's such a... And I pictured it so perfectly. That's another thing is if you have a full picture in your head, that is what movies are built on. You need to fully be able to picture like the, the movies playing in your head and you're getting little pieces that you that you uh, cut and you 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 tape them together and that makes the full movie. And so after that dinner scene, it all was built around that dinner scene. I said, okay, what happens after that dinner scene and what happens before that dinner scene to get there? And that's how I wrote I've Been Bitten. Now, when you write a script, you're going to come into a couple of trouble areas. That's what I call them. There are going to be at least two or three scenes where they really don't work and you have to write, you have to figure out how to fix them. And in I've Been Bitten, there's a, a scene where, and I'll just say this, it's not really a spoiler at all. There's a scene where I wanted to have a lot of 80s high school movies had a school dance scene near the end. So in my script, I had it where the main character goes to the dance near the end. But then it's just I was thinking about it and thinking how I would be able to do it. I just, it, it didn't work for me. And I, I struggled with that scene for weeks and weeks and weeks. And eventually, I actually rewrote it entirely. Because you know what I said? I don't advise doing this for every story because it's a stupid, limited way of thinking. But for this specific instance, I thought, well, you know what? I never went to any school dance. So why should this main character get to? You know, why should this character, if he is such a, an authentic, personal character, you know, why should he be going to this? Because it doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel right. And so I actually cut that completely from the script. Uh, I did have other characters going to the dance. and But then, sorry, I wish I had brought my water with me. Uh, I, I just had it where the characters don't go, the main ones don't go. And so that that helped me because then, boom, I was out of that trap. I was out of that trouble area. That's what you got to do. You got to get out of these trouble areas. And you got to figure it out yourself too because 
if you send a script with these trouble areas really sticking out, they're going to notice them and you're going to know that, that like you're, you know, don't send a script to people to read that you know has issues that need to be worked out. You know, figure those out for yourself. There was another scene in the script where there's a girl and and the main character and they're in a van. And I won't say anything else and I had such trouble with that scene that I rewrote it like 10 times to try to like, you know, figure out like okay, what because the first time I wrote it, I made the mistake of writing it all around a song that, you know, a copyrighted song. And, you know, that's a bad idea in itself. Don't do that. And so I, I just had all this trouble, like just rewriting it and saying like, you know, what should happen in this scene? You know, how should it go? It was really hard, but you know, you need to just work it out. You'll have a couple of these trouble areas and that's it. And I don't really know what to say about dialogue because I have a lot of fun with dialogue. I come up with fun lines and, you know, like it's hard because dialogue is very tricky to make it, make characters sound natural. But I would just say like, imagine the dialogue in your head as though these movies are actually going on in your head. Because I, I really, I make these full movies in my head before the script are even, the scripts are even finished. Like, I see the full picture in my head. That's why I think my scripts are pretty good for the most part. Because I picture, I know exactly what goes on in these scenes. I can see those characters. I can see these actions. And if you can't see what goes on in the script in your head, then what are you really writing? Are you writing a script? Or are you writing a, are you just writing a script? You know, you got to write a script with the pictures in your mind. Now, when you're finished with the script, it's a good idea to get other people to look at it. And now this is where I've had trouble. Because it, it is hard finding unbiased people to read your script. Honestly, like, you, you really got to pay. You got to pay to play. You got to get some, like, beta readers from websites to read it. Maybe get them to revise it because you're just devilish and smart like that. Uh, but it is really tough to find beta readers because... A lot of people who read your script, they read it because they like you, because they, they're your friend, your family, or they're actors who just want to be in a movie. And so they really won't be entirely honest. And it really hurts your script because you don't get the feedback that you need. And I would say the biggest tip with scripts is feedback. I do have a friend and he's very unbiased, and he read my most recent script, and he gave some pretty good feedback, and it actually really helped, because I said, okay, I've, I've heard these criticisms, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add to this script, and try to make it, like, more of, like, okay, I know what to do now, uh, you know, see, it's so helpful, criticism, feedback, it is number one, Feedback is the most important thing with creative works. You wouldn't be in... I'll tell you this little story before I end. In painting class... <laughs> sorry, I just wish I had some water because I know it makes the audio sound bad. In painting class, I, I was doing a self-portrait and I had this stupid idea of like I was going to put these colors that didn't work underneath the surface and then paint the flesh tones over those colors. So I put like brown and yellow and green on my face and my idea was to then paint the flesh tone over that and paint the skin tone over that. And obviously that's a really stupid idea. But what was funny was... This one girl named uh, Kylan, she came over and, and looked at my painting and she really liked it. 
and uh, she was she said oh Marco are you doing an abstract portrait and it was funny because I wasn't thinking about doing an abstract portrait at all uh, I never would have thought about doing an abstract anything uh, I just wanted to do a, a good portrait and I thought oh I'm going to do something clever and edgy and smart but that moment where she told me abstract, that opened me up to the idea of doing an abstract portrait. And so from then on, I made it into an abstract portrait. And it's a really, really good portrait. Like, I love it. I love that painting. Uh, it's not the best. You know, it was my first ever self-portrait painting, actually. And I would give it like a B plus. You know, I think it was a good start. But it was all because of them. It was all because of uh, Kylan. And then the teacher also said, oh, is that an abstract painting? So it was all because of feedback. Because of people looking at my work and, sa and saying that. You know, I, the painting would have been a disaster if not for those people. And so that's why criticism, feedback is very important. If you're someone who doesn't want feedback, then you should just quit. Quit now because you suck, okay? Like your work, it's not perfect. It needs criticism. It needs feedback. No matter how mean it is, it needs feedback. Feedback is number one. So, and I, I have been revising the script too today and doing the shot list and... Sorry about that, everyone. Farm uh, equipment goes by once in a while. Uh, and so, yeah, and, and actually in rewriting the script, some of the scenes, I have come up with some really, really good scenes that I never would have come up with if not for that feedback. And I, I, I love feedback. I love feedback. It's my favorite part of creating anything. Like when I, when I write a script... My, I love writing the script and I love seeing the movie in my head, uh, these, good, these good movies. But the part that I love most is hearing what other people think about them. And even when it's negative feedback too, negative feedback is even better. Because there was this bitch from last year, this uh, Yugoslavian Karen Cunt, and she read my script and she loved it and then she changed her mind for some reason and uh she acted like a total bitch about it and she called my script a pornographic raunch fest and it's funny because like that's exactly what I was going for when I wrote I've been bitten I modeled it after 80s raunchy comedies and so like why the fuck would I be uh, insulted by someone saying that it's a pornographic rotch fest. Like, that, that sounds like a damn good movie, doesn't it? Like, wouldn't you want to see a movie that's, uh, that people describe it as a, a pornographic rotch fest? I mean, sign me up. I want to go see that movie right now. Like, that was like a really good compliment that I got from this cunt. And so I, I was really thankful that that cunt actually told me that because I never would have known that, like, oh, wow, my script is raunchy? Wow, I never would have known that. Like, it's just got a couple of nude scenes, and, and uh, a couple of them, you know, I actually changed them in the shot list where I, I only made them semi-nude. And so it's like, oh, wow, like, my script is raunchy? Wow. <laughs> like, I never would have known. <laughs> Like, really, really just bizarre, the actors nowadays. Really, really bizarre. Uh, and, you know, David Lynch, it, not anything to do with the script, but when he made Lost Highway and Roger Ebert said two thumbs down, you know what he did? He took that and put it on the poster and said two more reasons to see this movie. And that's really what you got to do, too, is that some people... They read your script and they have their own personal agendas, political agendas, social agendas, and they won't give you an unbiased critique of your script. And so you really got to watch out for that. And you got to uh, say, uh, oh, fuck off, Karen. 
Okay, fuck off. Your opinion doesn't matter. It's hilarious, and I'll use it to promote my film. Uh, but, you know, call, acting like that's some sort of an insult. I mean, guys, there are so many movies that are pornographic raunch fests that are, like, considered classics, considered, like, top-tier films. Uh, a lot of the top-tier films, you know, barely any of them uh, don't have some sort of uh, sexuality in them somewhere. Uh, so I, I consider that a high compliment. You know, someone else even said that I've Been Bitten uh, could be up there with, like, horror classics like Friday the 13th. And so uh, these criticisms, you know, I love it. I love feedback. Uh, feedback, I, I thrive off of feedback. And I highly encourage everyone who's creative, thrive off of feedback. Don't fear it. Thrive off of it. So please like this video, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next week. And you know what? Let's change it. Wednesdays used to be South Park Wednesdays. South Park is over, so from now on, this show will be every Wednesday instead of every Friday. So goodbye, everybody. See you soon.